This is a call about governance or things like governance. Uh, second out of four, we're just going to have four of them. And uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I was just catching up on a, with a friend, Michael Anton Dilla, yesterday over coffee. He's in, in Portland for a couple of days. I will be going to something he's running on Saturday around the topic I'll describe now, which is Oslo for AI. Uh, so Oslo for AI.org, O S L O F O R A I.org. Uh, <clears throat> and he's trying to talk about governance as well. So I described these calls to him. I don't think he can make this call here. Uh, but he's super interested in the topic. We have a whole a whole mess of overlaps on um, of interests and uh, passions and uh, activities. So um, go ahead, Gil. Interesting thing about Oslo for AI, Jerry, in Oslo, which you said you said didn't work, or did work, or didn't work. Um, nobody seems to know why it didn't work. <laughs> Um, I'm, Everybody, everybody's got different theories of why it didn't work or where, who to blame for it not working. Kind of fascinating. Yeah. Um, when did BB go to the Temple Mount? It was Sharon. Oh, that's right. It was Sharon. Sharon and it was in the early aughts, I think. Uh, September 29th, 2000. So that's way after the Oslo. Yeah, Oslo was early 90s. Sharon went to Temple Mount and more intifada resulted, but Sharon was also who pulled Israel out of Gaza in 2005. Right. And, and dragged out Israeli settlers. Um, so, which seems to be often forgotten in the current story. Yeah. Um, so on our last call, we ended with a... Um, uh, a, a structural question about these calls uh, that I'd like to pose to us, but also I'll, I'll, I'll type a couple of links in the chat. One of them is to the spreadsheet where uh, many of us answered the questions that I put in the invite. Uh, so there's uh, sort of nine answers there. Uh, I can put a link to the form as well. Uh, please hold. If you want to answer the uh, the survey, then please go to a link I will put in the chat in a moment. Ooh. Link, short URL, copy. So if you haven't answered it yet, here's a, a place where you can take this survey. And then the question that I had posed at the end of last week's call was really pragmatic. Uh, what can we do with the three hours we have scheduled on this topic? Uh, my intentions with these calls were to were to walk away with improved resources about what works in governance worldwide at any scale. And uh, by resources, uh, it might mean stories, articles, it might mean process, pattern languages, it might mean other sorts of things. Uh, Tom Attlee and crew have created the Wise Democracy Pattern Language, for example. That's already on my on my list of, of delightful resources here. Uh, and I think a piece of what we might be able to do with our three hours, for example, is tell each other stories about the best resources we know about in this in these topics. Uh, the second order best results I could hope for is the weaving together of a variety of these resources into a stack. I'm going to use geeky language for this of how you wish society ran, how we helped co-regulate or govern with one another uh, played out and, and illustrated or demonstrated or mapped or described or whatever. That would be my second order wish. But three hours is not a lot of time to, to develop all that, but that's kind of where, where I'm personally aiming. Go ahead, Stacey. Yeah, I may be the only one that doesn't know, and if that's the case, I don't need to know, but can you say a little bit about what the actual process process at the Oslo Accords were? Because I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know enough to actually report that well. And my voice is echoing in your background, I think. Um, oh, and the noise canceling just caught up with us, so, so it's not. Um, I, I would have to ask Dilla because he hears about that knows a lot. And I, I bet to you that we could Google that and figure it out. But I don't know enough to answer that question, I'm afraid. OK, because Gil brought up a good point, you know, uh, and I think if people have different opinions on whether it worked or why, you know, I mean, not whether it worked on why it didn't work. Learning why it didn't work would would be really important. <laughs> I don't think we can learn why it didn't work, Stacey. I think we could learn what people's different opinions are about why it didn't work. But 
again, that would be important because there's probably elements of each of yep. those things. And in, in terms of going forward and creating a new process to weave in all of those issues would could only be a positive, I think. But maybe not focus for these three hours. Um, I will take it as homework to ask Dilla and either see that he reports in on that on our next call, or I will figure out uh, something on that for our, our next call, which is in two weeks at this hour. Thank you. Uh, but thanks for asking. And I think that's a, if, if it was motivating enough for Dilla to decide to, to use it in the name of the structure, then we should hold it in conversation here. Jerry, to your, to your list of possible outcomes, uh, what you're calling the FAQ, I'm thinking about as a collection of examples of approaches and experiments and realities on the ground, kind of in the spirit of Eleanor's what's working kind of work. Um, because in my experience, or I guess my you know, change theory, people people get stumped trying to think beyond what is present right now. We talked about imagination yesterday, a bunch of living between worlds. Uh, and so things that are seeds for imagination of, oh, here, look at this, this actually happened. It may not be appropriate for me here right now, but I can't say it's impossible because there it is. Um, Oslo being one example, Rojava comes to mind as another example of, you know, like what, what, what happened there? What was different? What was good about it? What was not good about it? What can I draw from it? So a catalog, I mean, just remind me of the whole earth catalog, which was enormously generative in my coming up in, you know, set like what, late 60s, early 70s of just like, here's stuff to notice and explore and pay attention to that I never even imagined before. And so the, 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 the imagination can opener, um, stock with all kinds of goodies is, uh, is an interesting thing. So, you know, uh, I'll, I'll spin FAQ into something like that. Cool. Uh, Tracy just asked in the chat, are we sharing these resources anyplace? There's sort of, there's two places right now, neither one of which is fabulous, but one place um, I'm busy adding all the resources I hear about and find into my brain. So I will share a link to that uh, in the chat, but the other one is a, uh, a markdown document that's on the OGM wiki, which is uh, Pete Kaminsky runs Massive Wiki. That's kind of the way I'm writing these days. And so I'm, I'll share a link right now to the page uh, that's there, which right now is mostly a, a link to uh, these conversations and the recordings of the conversations as we go. There we go. Um, but it is here. And if you know how to use Git, uh, you, if you look at the bottom of this page and click on the link to go to the page in Git, you could use the Git editor to edit that page and make changes to it right there. That, that should work. Otherwise, I can help you out or Pete can help you out to co-edit. Or you could just say things and mention things and we will sort of glue them in. And if there's more interest, we could start a spreadsheet, an Airtable, or something else. Uh, but I think you know collections of resources and spreadsheets are interesting, and there, there's probably a few people who've done those already. I would love to find you know if we have good resources. Uh, if anybody's done that, let's find them and add them to our list of uh, of resources. Hmm. And and Tracy's uh, say more if I'm not answering your question enough. Um, I think I'm I'm tracking. Thank you. So I'm in the wiki, and I'm and I'm not familiar with this wiki so is there a process you said for getting um oriented uh yes uh, so, so it's a, it's nearly a wiki a but bit. not quite because on most wikis there's an edit this page button and this one kind of doesn't have that uh, if you scroll to the bottom of the page there should be a link to that page on github and then github has an editor or it doesn't uh let me, let me I didn't go, go to it and see what's up uh but uh, central repository. Oh, it's only to the central repository. That's interesting. It doesn't go to this particular page. All right. I need to talk to Pete. Uh, one of the things that we are actually going to create for Massive Wiki is uh, a header or a, a widget of some sort that says, hey, if you'd like to edit this page, click here. And then we will gradually improve the ways of editing uh, the wiki. Uh, right now, if are you familiar with using uh, GitHub, Tracy? Not at all. <laughs> okay, so so GitHub is is mostly is where a lot maybe most open source code uh, is, lives these is, days. Jerry, is this the best use of our time talking about governance? I'll do this for one minute, just uh, because how to collaborate I think is important. Uh, so GitHub is mostly for code, except there's a bunch of people doing things like writing books and collaborating on documents using GitHub as a way of doing the sharing. 
Uh, mm -hmm. GitHub saves yes. a different saves all the versions, so that's what the wiki backend would normally do. So we're borrowing GitHub yes. for that. But then GitHub has this technique called fork and pull, where mm -hmm. you can fork a repository, make changes to it, and then send a pull request to the author of the page, who then accepts or declines each of the pull requests. That's a clumsy but well-known among programmers collaboration method. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to make that a lot easier, as would happen on other wikis. Mm -hmm. So thanks for asking. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, other proposals. I still don't for... see res I just want to say I still don't see resources, and I'm happy to find another time to kind of understand um, how to use this. I've used other platform, other resources on GitHub, and I agree with you. There's maybe more narrative in places, and so um, thanks. Though. So, well, so a thing, I could, a, a thing I can very easily do is I can take the uh, spreadsheet that is the has the results of the survey that I just shared. I can create a new tab there. I can just we can just label it resources and use that. I, and I'll put a pointer to that spreadsheet in the doc in the page I just shared, so that anybody who wants to and find you know figures this out can go there. Why don't, shall I do that? Because that's because everybody knows how to use a Google spreadsheet, and uh, at least we, we're starting with something that's that's simple and common. Um, I hate having a high barrier to to participation uh, in a conversation like this. Uh, other thoughts? How else? What would what would? Do we need to redefine the purpose of these calls, or do I need to re-explain them a bit? Um, and if the purpose is relatively clear, what what could we do together in this hour plus two more? that would make you smile and be really happy that you had spent this time together. Could you just simply drop? state the purpose as you understand it? Sure. Um, there's a lot of really good critiques of our present systems of governance, like democracy is broken. I have a thought in my brain that says, was 2006 peak democracy? Because there's so many like Ill Ill illiberal democracies growing up around the world, including Trump wants to make ours into one and so forth. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other, uh, we just had a call, the regular OGM weekly call, which turned out to be about misinformation and disinformation, which is breaking our ability to govern uh, with one another. And so I'm trying to figure out what actually does work for governance at any scale, because I have a suspicion that things that work might, might work really well, where there's little pressure at a very local scale might scale up well if we applied them uh, at you know city scale or state scale or international scale, whatever else. I don't know. Uh, but if we can figure out um, what is working, and we, we talked about examples like the Mondragon Cooperative or Lynn Ostrom's uh, principles for governing uh, commons. Uh, there's a, a bunch of other things that are sort of the, the, the things that people put in the spreadsheet as answers for starting points for things that are working. That was the beginning of this conversation. And, and again, if, we, if that could be constructed into more of a stack or a structure so that somebody in any community on the planet who was like, God, I'm really tired of our methods of decision-making right now in collaboration. What's better? What could we use? I would love for them to be able to reach out and find resources uh, that we're not going to do in three hours, but we might do if we find a, a better way to do that together. That was a bit lengthy, but does that help? So is that is that looking for a pattern language? And there are a couple of pattern languages that are kind of related here. There's the wise democracy pattern language, and there's also uh, liberating structures, which is a pattern language for facilitation or facilitators, which isn't quite a pattern language. It's more of a set of modules and ways to do facilitation. It's it's not quite structured as a pattern language, uh, but and I and I imagine that there's others I haven't heard of, but those are are good starting points. And I I'm a naive fan of pattern languages. I think that distilling wisdom into patterns is a really, really great thing. And I wish we had more of them. So maybe in some sense, I'm uh, another piece of wishware for me for this project idea is a pattern language that talks about these different aspects. And that doesn't try to replicate uh, what wise democracy is doing, but rather builds on it, uh, kind of a meta pattern language that says, hey, there's a, a lot of really good stuff over here. What's missing from that is over here. And uh, you know, curating and, and collecting up some of the, those things ourselves. So there seems there's at least three aspects to do in that. One is collecting. Um, yes. 
Uh, you just, just, you know, just raw, you know, big net gathering stuff that seems to be somewhat generally relevant to what we're, what our concerns are here. Second is curating, is sifting and giving it some sort of, you know, ca curating and cataloging, maybe. And, uh, and then third, which is what you started with, is distilling, which is, you know, how do I harvest useful things out of this? And that might be a multi, you know, a, that might be a user function as well as a curator function. You know, give them something, provide something that people can distill what they need from it uh, in their own situations. Yes. So is what Jerry said what we're here for? Does that resonate for anybody? Would you change it? Tracy, do you mind introducing yourself a little bit and talking about um, uh, your work? Because I, I think it's quite relevant to what uh, what we're doing here. And I think you're with Circle Forward Partners, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is... Um... Tracy, before you oh, do, did, Jerry, mm -hmm. did you do a satisfactory answer or not answer to your question? Uh, not yet, but I'm hoping we get there by getting to know each other a little bit more. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, I heard about this, um, these calls through the Global Regeneration Collab, and uh, I recognize Gil from there, I think. And I just started um, participating in a group around governance and thinking about regenerative governance. And so there are a lot of resources, there's a shared Slack channel. And um, and then I heard about these conversations. So my uh, partner and co-founder with me, uh, we founded Circle Forward in 2015 around collaborative governance. And that's really evolving into collaborative network governance. So a deep desire to shift our systems, which are fragmentary, fragmented, and deny our interdependence. Um, and so shifting that and recognizing that to shift systems um, that no one individual organization, agency, business, sector uh, can shift systems, but that we need the requisite variety. This is our belief. Um, from across the system to shift systems. And so we focus on uh, bringing people the skills, tools and practices for collaborative network governance, because we believe the form at a uh, systems level, a systems level governance, the form is network, network structure, pattern, network pattern, where anybody can connect with anybody else. And um, so that's a little bit about us. And, and so we've been working um, mostly across the US um, and nationally with uh, multi-stakeholder networks of different um, geographic positions and scopes and issue areas. So we don't focus as much on issues as we do on the governance that people are practicing. And we've done some international work um, still pretty much in the West, Western um, world. The Western world, the weird world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, it's uh, you're reminding me of several things. Uh, I apparently added you to my brain some time ago because I've got I've got you under Circle Forward Partners, but then I also have the Collaborative Governance Accelerator. And uh, at some point uh, back in 2019, uh, I found this document and I added uh, the eight governance design issues that you have: purpose, participation, value propositions, reflection, coordination, decision making, operating principles, and resourcing. Um, which is lovely. And I, I put it at the time under enumerated wisdom, which is uh, a thought that might amuse people. It's got lots of different lists of things that are good. Uh, I won't distract our conversation with that. But this is the kind of resource uh, that should be on our resources list. So I will I will put a link to it there uh, unless you want to. But uh, this is a great start. And, and thank you. Other thoughts? Um, is this a good framing for you? If so, what should we do with our time together? What would make what would make it a better framing? Go ahead, Kim. So <clears throat> it, it seems like we've jumped to what's out there that works, what are the resources we can compile, and wouldn't that be useful for folks, which I don't disagree with. I come at it from a slightly different standpoint of, um, one, 
everybody here looks like uh, they lack a lot of melatonin in their skin. So we're all pretty much, um, and, and we're guessing we're all U.S. based. Eleanor, are you in the U.S.? You guys see American flag behind you there. <laughs> but um, so, you know, none of us has grown up in a, a former Soviet republic or under a different rule of governance. Um, so we're really inside of a box that we're trying to think outside of. So I think we need to recognize that. Um, I'm always interested in before we jump to what's out there of hearing what people think of when they come when they think about governance, you know, what uh, what principles, what functions, uh, whose voices count, how do they get represented? How do we handle the issue of power? You know, power is rarely talked about. I just watched um, uh, some show and 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 there's this line where it says, you know, naive people always go for the light, but power always hides in the shadows. And it was a political thriller, you know, it's like, yeah, there's an awful lot of power in the shadows. How do we shine light on the power structures? How do we develop um, checks and balances? You know, there used to have checks and balances in this country. They've been pretty much gamed at this point. So we know it's not working, but is it possible to design a system of governance that can't be gamed or is very difficult to game? And as people recognize it's being gamed, it can reinvent itself so that it becomes uh, ungameable. Uh, those are questions I'd, I'd like to explore um, if that feels appropriate to other people here without jumping into what's already out there. Because that's, you know, you can use ChatGPT to generate a list like that. So how can we use our time together in a in a dialogue that's going to uncover some stuff for us and help us grow and learn from each other? Love that, Ken. Um, anybody else? Um what does governance mean to us? Sorry, FT, FTSOW? For the sake for the of what? For the sake of who? For the, for the sake, sake of, of how? Who? Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Eleanor. Yeah, thanks. And this, what interests me right now, and I'm not sure this aligns with the group intention, but um, I'm deeply concerned about the state of governance in the United States and certainly across Europe, maybe longer. And I feel like we're at a point similar to the founding of the United States where they were overthrowing not just King George, but the whole idea of kings and form a republic mm -hmm. where the power resided in the citizens. And they, at that time, Madison and Jefferson, a number of them did intensive study into the nature of governance right you know from Greece all the way on to the present day okay. and I one of my guiding uh, lights from the founding of the United States is Thomas Paine who asked you know we have it in our power to begin the world anew mm -hmm. and I think our current structure of governance has brought us to this point mm -hmm. and it's obviously feeling a lot of stresses and strain mm -hmm. and a lot of uh corruption influence pushing it towards big corporations, towards the very wealthy, towards very destructive environmental decisions that are against the commons and against the regular people. So the question I have is we are living in this moment. What can we do if we understood we can begin the country and the world anew? What, how do we deepen our understanding of the nature of governance so we know what we can be fighting for, moving towards, talking about, talking and working into being? And it's not clear in my mind. I mean, I love the idea of the United States, even though obviously we had flaws at the beginning that the Native Americans pointed out. If you don't have everyone in the circle, you're setting up for trouble. And they left out enslaved people and women and it's been, you know, 250 years of trouble because of that. So obviously there was some flaws, but the basic idea of the power resides in the citizen was a good one. It's been stripped away by the nature of how power has played out. But I understand the current system. I understand the dynamics that are corrupting it and distorting it right now. What I don't have clear in my mind is what are we aiming for? Are we trying to clear corruption out of the current system? Or are we talking about a new design in some way that gives greater assurance and protection to both the earth itself and to the, the, the regular person in terms of power of self-governance? And if this group could help me get more clear 
on that? Like, do we need to fix this system in some way? And if so, how? Or do we need to envision and create a new system? And if so, what does that look like? Um, thanks, Honor. I'll take a swing at that. And I'd love anybody else who feels strongly about the, the question you asked to jump in also. Um, I think there's a lot of ways to try to fix the current system. And a lot of people have tried really hard already. So Lawrence Lessig uh, created a, an organization called Root Strikers, where he was trying to st strike at the roots of corruption in Congress and a bunch of other things, <clears throat> which I don't think has made a lot of progress uh, or has sort of conquered anything. Um, Citizens United, there's a whole bunch of legislation and things that I could point to that need to be fixed, overturned, whatever, to fix the current system. I'm not sure that's our charter here. I'm really interested in all those issues. I think the more productive, well, it would be really productive if somebody could fix all those things, sorry. <clears throat> um, the, the more generative path for us might be to think about what and, and by saying other, I don't mean not democracy, but I have a lot of problems with democracy as its, as its model. And by the way, there are a lot, probably dozens of variants of democracy itself. There's certainly uh, multiple methods for voting or collecting up what people think about an issue and making decisions about them. That, like between voting technologies and how you assemble issues and all that kind of thing, it's crazy the, the rich variety that even exists under the umbrella of democracy. Um, and weirdly, with a couple of things like Citizens United, where money equals uh, freedom of speech, uh, you wind up with a situation where the elections are almost 50-50 all over the place because poor, both sides are pouring even amounts of money into the races. And it turns out that money and advertising replaces citizenship and participation and collective decision making too much. So I think I'm looking for ways out of um, the idealist in me is looking for clever ways out of those Mexican standoffs. Sorry, Mexico, you just got co-opted into the Mexican standoff trope. But um, but how are, are there successful ways of being together uh, in large scale um, where we don't get trapped by those kinds of those kinds of dilemmas and things? Um, I, there's a whole set of conversations about, for example, we have a two-party system here. Should we have a multi-party system? That's an entire long trope that would take more than three calls to get through. A lot of groups have tried to work on that. Every now and then somebody launches a third-party effort like RFK is launching right now uh, in this election cycle. Doesn't, doesn't seem to help our elect electoral system, but that's an issue, a, a rich issue of its own that I don't particularly want to spend our time on here. Um, if, if I had my druthers, I'd, I'd rather look positively into, into other places. I could probably, if I sat and thought a little longer, think of three or four or five other major things that, that need attention, that need fixing in the current system like that. It might be interesting to have a laundry list of things you would fix in the system without debating how to fix them. That could be useful. And maybe a thing that some of us already have or have found. Um, I would love that. That would be interesting. Thoughts? Yeah, I want to um, put a plug in for for a, something I've been working on for a long time, which has to do with when coping with wicked messes, if you approach them as problems to be solved, you're going to make them worse. The, their situation is that you're, you know, you can't get people to agree on what the problem is. So that's a, that's a real challenge. Um, you have limited resources. Once you expend them, you may not have any more to uh, to expend and can you make it better or worse? Cause you, you can't fix it. So I think it's um, my approach to that is before you ask, how do we solve problems? You first ask, what would it look like if it was working well for everybody concerned? And you get all the voices who are involved to say, here's how I think it would look. And then you can say, okay, now what, um, what systems already exist that would support that, which is, Hey, how would you look in the world for models of that, that are working? What systems are in place that could be tweaked a little and repurposed so that, that would serve those purposes? And what needs to be reinvented or invented from whole cloth, um, which then takes you into the problem solving level. So it's it's a little bit of a cart before the horse to say, how do we fix what's broken? Because it puts you in an engineering mindset and leaves out the imagination. Um, so once again, I'll, I'll go back to, can we imagine together whether it's, it doesn't matter if it's plausible, doesn't matter if it's doable, 
what would our imagining look like of I can imagine a world where governance does X, Y, and Z and people thrive and are flourishing, you know, um, I want to hear those stories from people. I think that would be really interesting to hear each person's view on that. doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It's just like, this is an imaginative space and you're free to write whatever fiction you want. And who knows, maybe there'll be something in there that will, will trip somebody into, wow, this could really work. And we get something very different than let's look at what Norway and Finland are doing. Love that, Ken, a lot. That resonates really well for me. Yeah. We just had some. Sorry. <clears throat> um, it's weird because I tend to think of paths to getting there a lot rather than the end state that much, but um, I I'll explain what I mean. So, so on Mondays, we have a standing call uh, to create neo books, which is the kind of the deconstruction of books into nuggets of ideas that are reusable, recomposable in different ways. And one of the reasons I love that project is that I think that if we can start thinking together by, by comparing nuggets, improving nuggets, uh, et cetera, et cetera, we might actually be able to express our political platforms as a collection of nuggets that live in this space. And we might actually participate in democracy in an ongoing way through this debate, rather than once every four years at the major elections with, with one vote for one of two parties that are remarkably similar all things told. And so the decentralization of decision-making is one of the reasons I'm excited about this Neo Books project. Um, and I can envision a world in which I proxy my vote to Ken because Ken is an expert in community building and a couple other sorts of things because he and I have been comparing notes and building a body of work that we sort of agree on in these nuggets, in this, in this, in, in this idea space, uh, which is holding what we believe so that anybody can come in and investigate it in the interest of transparency. And so that other people can say, well, this is not This is a faulty assumption. This is flawed logic. This The evidence doesn't support this. Here's another way of doing it. We can compare notes and, and improve those sorts of things. So uh, for me, uh, a healthy world out in the future would involve people much more engaged day to day on these ideas. And then not everybody on every idea because that just doesn't pencil out, but people only focus on the ideas they really care about. And then proxying their care or their perspective over to people they trust deeply, who then declare and show their point of view on whatever those other areas are in this funny new space where we share ideas. Um, so uh, David Reed is a is a brilliant guy on, on telecom spectrum. I would let him vote especially if he was regularly publishing what he's going to do and what he's up to, I would proxy all my votes over to him and I would stop paying attention to that area for maybe a couple of years until needed. So people would then gravitate in open space style toward the issues that have heat and, and usefulness to them. Um, set that aside, another idea about what this might look like uh, in the future, which is maybe more of a path to a future, is that um, there could be a game, think of a, a role player, a role playing game online that doesn't look important, doesn't look interesting, but this role playing game is about how do we make decisions together around bioregions and watersheds. And it's a game like civilization, only different, maybe it's even a fork or a branch of civilization or something like it, except while doing it, people start actually treating it seriously and, may, and using it to make changes in their community. So it's a game connected to real life. Uh, so that they turn LARPing, <clears throat> live action role play, into actual change in the world. And this thing is contagious enough that it catches on, unfortunately, like QAnon, a thing that came up in our last call, which is that QAnon is kind of an alternate reality game of its own that really caught on a lot. And <clears throat> what if there were a beneficial game that caught on, that because it looked like a game and didn't look serious, wasn't stopped by the political powers that make sure they, they retain political control, and want to keep doing things and that we all enjoyed playing that game which is a really high bar i think because most games have a few things going on that people object to but but in that world we were playfully improving our world and making important decisions that started being treated seriously outside of the game that would make me happy as well so those are two different visions i've sort of been harboring or building uh mike do you want to talk about policy bill
Mike may be in a place where he can't talk right now. So uh, he's chatting well in the chat, but um, go ahead, Stacey. Well, ju just similar to what you're talking about, earlier this morning on Facebook in a community group, somebody, uh, a reporter wanted to know what people thought about a new law that our governor wanted to enact. And immediately somebody started saying something negative about it. And I suspected it was only because it was coming from a democratic governor. So I asked her specifically, like, what was the difference? You know, I reworded it and I said, well, what's the difference? And the answer I got, I was able to show her that if that's how she feels, then she'd actually want to support it. And other people saw, it was very obvious and other people saw the same thing but other people responded in an insulting way. And she said, you know, I didn't want anybody. This is just my opinion. And I went, you know, I said to her, I wasn't trying to insult you. I really wanted to hear what the opposition was. And to me, the idea of working together to hear all the different opinions and then deciding it would be a new way of doing things. It's unfortunate that the only place I can have that forum is on Facebook. That's not where I wanna be having it. But I just wanna say that I think we need to recognize that never be, I mean, the media, social media and traditional media is forever going to be a part. It's forever going to impact our governance. Any system, it, it, I don't think we should be thinking, how do we stop it? I think we should be thinking about how do we redirect it and you know change things so that it works together and that's why i come to all of these calls mike is on his bike that would be why he was participating <laughs> i i am doing something i've not tried before Were you we have an hour we have, an, we have an hour before the um rain starts so i decided i needed to get out but uh, just going on, uh, your idea, Jerry, is the specific application of this weird idea I've had for three or four years. Policyville would, if we do it right, involve millions and even tens of millions of people like some of these intergalactic massive online games. And, and, and what's cool is you could actually have something more than just a game if you earn points by donating to a cause. You know, every every party in this game would have a party platform, you know, four or five planks that are essential to its being. And it could be something like mar uh, legalized marijuana everywhere. And members could donate to Normal or some other group fighting to undo the marijuana laws and, and build build up speed and build up momentum. The best part is that if there are some new ideas, something more interesting than legalize marijuana and declassify all the UFO files, maybe some politicians would wake up and go, hey, 300,000 people think this is a good idea, and you'll actually start having discussions. But it, it's actually not something that costs a lot of money to do. The, the hardest part is getting something like Reddit has to elevate the most enlightened, useful, innovative thoughts, because otherwise you will have the trolls take over and destroy the whole process. Um, thanks, Mike. Uh, your, what you said reminded me that one reason why I don't like sort of separate item um, websites, uh, maybe like move on, but there's other ones that, that do um, issue based, I'm forgetting exactly what, what they are, but that they sort of posit, they try to vote up, this is sort of what DAOs were supposed to do, uh, digital autonomous organizations, you have a bunch of a list of issues, and you vote them up and down. And the one that gets the most votes gets gets acted on, is that there's actually systems interacting that that none of those individual initiatives really have the reach or capacity to, to map or or understand. And it's in the system thinking that a lot of the richness and interesting power and, and jujitsu capacity shows up. Um, so I, I like the idea a lot and I just proposed a game, but for me, the game would need to, would, would it have to entail, under, un, I, and I, I, God, I hesitate to say understanding the systems dynamics because those are so difficult that almost nobody will, but taking them into account as part of what these platforms or policy initiatives might do and, and how they might work. A second thought from what you just said is, 
um, maybe what we do is we borrow some existing platforms. We take some, we take a, we create a subreddit. We map, well, I'm friends with the founder of Idealist, which has volunteering and he's doing a big project right now to help people change the world and then add, thir add a third or fourth platform. And let's just hack together a game uh, that in fact doesn't have its own platform, but exists on these other distributed platforms. That might be interesting. The other thing that you need for a real political system is you have to have a deadline that forces people to come to some semblance of consensus so they can move forward. And most games don't have that. As a matter of fact, the, the perverse incentive is to keep the game going forever. So people just keep arguing and going on and on and on. And well, the other... So, so the other find, challenge find that is that you games here. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say the other the other challenge is that you need to have some way of pushing back against falsehoods, so that you're not making decisions based on bogus information that's being perpetuated by people with an agenda. Um, thanks, Mike. You just reminded me of the book uh, "Finite and Infinite Games" by James Kars, um, and he says the. A lot of games have rules and endings, but the more fun games are the infinite games. And what I'm proposing as the ongoing civic discourse is kind of an infinite game of co-governance, right? Um, but... Didn't even see my lips move, did you, when I wrote that in the chat? No. <laughs> oh my God, there we go. <laughs> well, well, you can you can have both. You can have a, a system that's infinite, but you have deadlines to get stuff done along the way. So the and that's what I are... see. Most are... most volunteer organizations never get to yes, they never get to real accomplishments without that kind of self-imposed deadline. They, they blackmail themselves. I agree, Mike. I think deadlines are really important. And, um, you know, something I've done a lot in my work in corporations is um, using World Cafe principles. When someone puts forth an idea that I think is really simple, I have people say, okay, what's great about this idea? What excites you about it? And what's um, confusing to you about it? and that you're not sure of. And then what are the questions you have that need to be answered for you to take this idea and run with it? And it's incredible the amount of information that you get. And because I have people doing maybe two rounds on each question, it's different than crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing is put your best idea up on the website here, you know, and we'll, we'll vote them up or down. These are in-depth conversations of 40 minutes where people go, well, have you thought about this? And, you know, we tried that in the past and here's what, here's where we're into problems. How would we accomplish it now? Right. So you get really carefully thought through robust answers coming back. And then those get put into the pot of here's what's important to us as a group. And because it's not individual ideas that are just off top of mind, but they're really carefully, thoroughly discussed ideas. They tend to be really well thought out and have a lot more, um, groundedness to them and, and a lot more uh looking for the right word here there, there is just much higher quality and so the participation thing is really challenging because one a lot of people don't feel that they matter in the system so for me a good governance system would mean everybody involved would say my voice matters i see how it matters i get to participate and two i can't be an expert on everybody everything so i need to have people like jerry was talking about of somebody read you know i would i would give him my proxy you know he's an expert i trust him and someone else say oh i don't trust him he's some you know and so you have you have that dynamic going on but if people are sitting and talking either online or face to face where they get to talk through the things that are important and then say yeah i can agree with this statement and this can then be fed into the into the governance system that would work a lot better i think than what we currently have Thanks, Ken. Before I go to Gil and Tracy, um, are we getting close to answering the question you asked earlier of us? Are we heading directionally we're, toward it? Or? We're not getting close, but we're doing really well. Okay. To me. Um, Ken, if you have, do you have more to say on that? I, 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 not to that. I have more to say, but not to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was just uh, pinging, pinging Ken to see if we're on, yeah. on, on, on the trail. So go ahead, yeah, Gil. No, no, no I'm just. I, I, I'm, I'm very happy to sit back and let others talk. Okay, so I'm back on games and deadlines. Uh, um, uh, deadlines aren't bad things. Uh, the term is maybe a bad term, but um, the thing, you know, there, there, there are consequences in time and space in the world. It matters sometimes if things happen in a certain time or not. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to, I don't have to list examples for you. You know all of them. Um, 
uh, I like the idea of the game. I've been in a bunch of multiplayer, multi-day role-playing games um, um, long before the online stuff. And it's been fascinating and enriching, particularly to have people take on particular roles in like a in, in a city or a state um, or an international situation that may not be the familiar role they want to play. Like, you know, actually live in the other person's shoes for several days. That's fascinating what that reveals. Uh, it strikes me that games have roles and rules and refs. Um, and that maybe got alighted in how we kind of jumped into the topic, but that that's part of the setting of the context of how folks are going to play a game. Um, and um, it may be a real challenging point here because uh, you got to agree on the rules for the game to work. And we're in a we're in a kind of mess now where we don't even agree on the rules. So, so the experiment is sort of like you know we declare a game. Here's a game. Here's how it works. Here's what the rules are. You don't have to play, but if you want to play, here's what it is. And there's ways of sort of you know boundary coaches that keep us in the game that we're playing, unless of course we decide to do a different game. And in a strange way, we're already in a game right now. We just don't call it that. It's life, but it is it is a game with rules and all that. Yeah. Um, a small side note, Ultimate Frisbee is self-refereed. There are no refs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an honor system, basically, on the field, and it seems to work really well, unless yeah. you get up to the world titles, and then it gets a little a little tetchy. But yeah. hey. And if you watch, if you watch, you know, basketball games, you you see games where somebody raises their hand and says, sorry, I fouled him. And you see games where people fight and deny and have to be called out by a ref. So different, different ways. You're talking Indeed. about Draymond Green going, sorry, I fouled him. Sorry, can resist it all the time. Uh, Tracy. Yeah, I I think um what this conversation reminds me of is thinking about like theory of change, right? Like what is our story? What is our narrative of how change happens? And I think that was one of the questions um that was it Eleanor that just left, but that she was saying, like, are we talking about reforming and repairing the systems and the government that we have? Are we talking about something? new and and i actually yeah so this gaming that you're talking about reminds me of the way i hold my theory of change around the governance shifts um is actually somewhere between this like repair and new but it's actually and i think you said it in the chat um about uh like more of an appreciative inquiry it's like more of seeing like i i i think our systems are changing right like well this changes always right but i see our systems um shifting quite a bit and i see um a lot of different pe people across the planet you know taking it upon the responsibility upon themselves to make their communities better and I see that that gets very sophisticated in terms of initiatives. Um, there's one I have in mind that I'm really curious about that's like across the grasslands that extends all the way from like Canada through the United States and Mexico and like an initiative of, of, of across um, national jurisdictions, state jurisdictions, local jurisdictions, um, native peoples and tribes, uh, nonprofits, businesses, right? So they have this um, commitment to that kind of like taking responsibility together. And, and so what I like about the game, so, so my theory of change, what, what this is bringing up for me is I think of the change in power and that's what I think we're talking about is how to shift power. And I don't think we can play it on the same field, right? Like we're not gonna go to that, right? We're this, we're talking about like some kind of like disruption, right? And it's like, so where is the leverage? And so that's what I like about this game because I have often thought that the shift in power is not gonna be um, revolution or violent. It's like, it's like more like water rising, right? So if you've ever been in a flood, it just, there's nowhere to go. It's just rises, the water rises and that kind of sense of, um, yeah. So, so I, so I agree with the sense that we, we self-organize and that sense of taking responsibility and it's kind of a sacred responsibility. Um, and, and some of the folks that I see doing this work that I think is really exciting, like because 
it's such a mindset, like cultural shift. It's a shift in how we relate to each other. It's a shift in so many ways, because when you talk about the diversity, like it confounds me at times, like not in this group, this group is like easy diversity. <laughs> well, when I'm in groups of neurodiversity and cultural diversity and uh, racial diversity that has like long standing historical equity, you know, patterns. Um, it's confounding, like to create spaces of belonging. So, um, so, and I think that work is happening too, right? Like, um, and so, yeah, so I, I do, I think that like we are, and I love it that people were nodding to the like piggybacking and connecting things that are working and, 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 and creating to me, a key is a mutuality ethic, like, like that we all benefit from the relationship because I think our extractive systems is like, and I think people experience that and they know, and like this whole, like the election's been stolen to me is an embodied sense of what has literally been stolen from communities, you know? And so, so this sense of mutualism to me is really central to like something that grows. And, and so I'll stop there. I like, I'm, I'm, and I love the idea that this is a game. That's the new way for me to think about that connection. Thank you so much. That's, um, I'm, I'm on board with what you're saying a lot. Uh, Gil than me. Yeah. Um, thanks Tracy. And thanks everybody. I'm thinking about game a lot too here. And you know, it's, it's funny. I've, I, I find myself speaking about games a bunch lately in this context of a designed, uh, inter set of interactions and, uh, uh, a lot of folks have a very negative reaction. They think when you say game, it's something that's not serious. Like, hey, this is serious stuff. I can't play games with this. You know, so like very different approach to game. And Mike, I'm back very much to what you were saying before with the policy bill or something like that. Um, it seems that one move we could make is to just declare a game, announce a game. Here's a game. Here's what it is. Here's how it works. Here's how you play and have it be something that is cool enough that people really want to play it. And it might need resources and logistics and et cetera behind it, but those seem to be the fun, the two fundamental moves is like, you know, invent it or three, you know, we invent it, we declare it and people want to play it. And then we see where it goes. I love that idea. Um, I want to throw a different thing than a game. Well, I this might look like a game as well, but it's very different. Um, religion. So Scientology was a bar bet. Uh, L. Ron Hubbard, somebody bet L. Ron Hubbard he couldn't start a religion, and he did. He went and started Scientology. Um, and I bought, uh, sort of thinking about this kind of stuff, I bought the domain foobarism.com, which I don't think I mentioned on the last of these calls, the first of these calls. But I bought Fubarism because Fubar means, you know, fucked up beyond all recognition, but it also Fu.bar is a placeholder file name for programmers. So what if we invented a placeholder religion? And, and I'm half serious here because one of our friends, Jordan Sukut, I had a conversation with him last year where he said, I want to run for president because he has a whole program. He's thought about everything. He's got a whole, and he is sincere, grounded, deep thinker, et cetera. And I'm like, you know, sincerity is not going to get you that far why don't you make yourself into a, 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 a Jimmy Haggard? Well, anyway, name your favorite televangelist or something like that. Jimmy Except, Swagger. Jimmy Swagger. Thank you. Uh, for good. Like, like do something a little bit more unique and outrageous, but bring it in toward like solving stuff like Sun Ra or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, th th that's a different path. It's not a game because then then you're not going online and racking up points and doing gamification, which games kind of require. Um, but you're in, and by the way, games and religions all have rule sets, mm -hmm. right? Uh, sometimes extremely elaborate rule sets, sometimes rule sets that make no sense. Um, a small side note, uh, Molly Melching helped reduce female genital mutilation in West Africa by a lot by going to the imams in villages and saying, hey, where in the Quran does it say that FGM should be practiced? 
-hmm. And they were like, golly, it's not in here. And then convince them to just let go of the practice. And you've got to do a lot of other stuff. And I don't know the details of the story, but the numbers went down, which was great because FGM is, a, I think, a terrible, stupid thing. Um, so that was hacking religion to make some social good. Go ahead, Tracy. It's also, I think what's important, and this is what to me distinguishes, I do facilitation, but I've always wanted to, like for me, just having a good conversation amongst folks was never quite enough, which is why I ended up doing governance work. So for me, how do you connect whatever that portal is in, how do you connect that actually to change? Like to something that's visible and that's meaningful change um, and responsibility. So that would be the question I'd have with these different approaches. Stacy. Yeah, I just so want to jump in there because that feeling that you expressed about that conversation never being enough. There's a whole world of people and you see them on Facebook and they're the people that you want to save from misinformation that are longing for conversations. And they they have been sucked into Trump because he made them feel like they were smart and they bought into any conspiracy theories because look, connect the dots. And when this one sees it and that one sees it and they all see it, we're the smart ones. So I just want to keep in mind that <clears throat> there are curious minds out there that if shown a pathway, would love to have those conversations. So I just want to not forget that. Um, Stacey, thank you. That totally marries up with a thought I've had for a long time, which is that Trump is having a side conversation with his followers that liberals in the media don't hear and can't understand and don't think about. And, and one way that it works is, hey, watch, I'm going to do something outrageous again today. And it's going to froth up the media and it's going to froth up the lefties. And they won't be able to talk about anything else for the next three days. And then after three days, I'm still going to be here. Look, and, and part of that conversation is about proving that he understands modern power better than anybody else does in the political arena. Um, and how, you know, eight years of Obama and his wearing a light gray suit one day is, is his biggest uh, scandal. And every yeah. day, every day has 10 things that Trump does that are <clears throat> that are like pretty egregious beige suit. Sorry. Or tan, um, something like that. Tan. I, you know, gray would have been OK. I'm not so, like gray. All right. Anyway, uh, so so this conversation thing is important because. Trump has figured out how to use new media and old media to host that conversation for him. And a piece of his conversation is about how he's hacking them to talk to everybody. Go ahead, Gil. No, he can he controls the media brilliantly. Yeah. It's, you know, it's it's like the the version we've been talking about, what you're saying is like a deer in the headlight strategy is do something that makes the Democrats apoplectic. So all they can do is sputter. And be outraged and point it like, did you see that? Did you see what it didn't and go nowhere? It, mm -hmm. It's a remarkable control strategy. So to that point, I think that before we have conversations about what policy we should have to have conversations of what do we want to see come out of the policy at a basic level that anybody could start thinking about, because those are the conversations that don't usually get had. It's all, you know, the policy level conversations are already up here. Um, thank you. We have gone through the hour that I had. Um, yeah, Gil's got to go. We've gone through the hour that I scheduled for this call. Thank you very much. Um, ideas for what to do for the next two calls, LMK, or post them on the Mattermost. Um, and we skip next week, remember? We skip next week. I will be I will be in Bahrain next week. So um, I'll be back and then we'll talk for two more sessions like this. But th thank you. This was really generative for me and, and very fruitful. I appreciate your being here. Thanks for hosting. Good to see everybody. Thanks for showing up, Tracy. That was great. Perfect timing. Nice to meet you, Tracy. Come back. Nice to meet you, yeah. Come back. Nice to meet you, Come yeah. Back. Come back, Tracy. Come, Come back. back. Oh, I'll be back. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Bye-bye. Uh,